everyone, I'm Hannah Witten. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, I am wearing the same dress that I was in my last video, just in a different color. I think I have some cheese in my cleavage. As I was setting up this equipment, my stoma was being real noisy and farty. So we'll see if it continues. Did you hear that? I don't know if you would have heard that. I can hear it, I can feel it. So it is a very exciting week because it is publication week for The Hormone Diaries, The Bloody Truth About Your Appearance by me, Hannah, ow, Hannah Witten. My book comes out on Thursday the 13th. I cannot wait for it to just be out in the world and see it in bookshops and for you to all post pictures of it and tag me in, please tag me in them. I want to feel validated. I really, really hope that you like this book. Also on Thursday, I'm going to be uploading a bonus video, which is a round table discussion that I filmed, kind of similar to the disability and sex one that I did last year. And this one is all about periods and contraception and hormones and all of that good stuff. And there's some amazing people on that panel round table thing. So definitely look out for that on Thursday and look out for this in bookshops Thursday. So in this video, I thought I would wear red, wear red, because blood, bleeding, periods. Yeah, just imagine I'm one big period right now. And I'm gonna answer some questions about periods and about contraception and also about the book and like the process of writing and, and making this thing. Tips for first time having period sex. I actually did a whole video on how and why you should have period sex. But my main tips would be, if it's the first time, maybe try it on one of your lighter days. Remember that you don't have to do penetration. You can like still have a tampon or a menstrual cup up there and just do like external clitoris action. Um, also lay a towel down. Towels are great. I bought a red towel specifically for this purpose. But any towel will do, just maybe not a white towel. And just know that it's perfectly normal perfectly healthy and perfectly safe. When you came off hormonal contraception, did you gain weight? Yes, I did, but I didn't notice it at first because that shit is gradual. And the thing is, is that I'll never know if it was 100% coming off the pill that caused me to gain weight, but it was after I came off the pill that I noticed that I'd started gaining weight after that. So jury's out, but I'm pretty sure. I can't remember exactly how much weight I did gain, but I had to get rid of all my clothes. Like I did not fit into any of my clothes anymore. I went up like one and a half dress sizes, which I found interesting because I was not expecting that at all because you often hear stories about people who go on the pill and gain weight, but I came off it and then gained weight. Look at this weight that I gained literally all here. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the moon cup and other eco-friendly contraception? My thoughts are, if you have the means to invest in it up front and you are like a-okay with the cleaning process and the process of like putting it in, taking it out and using like cloth pads or whatever, then go for it. Those kinds of products are not for everyone and we shouldn't be shaming people for using disposable products. But if you have the means and you're comfortable doing it, like do it, seriously. Do it, 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 do it. <laughs> What are some signs of early menopause? So I think some signs of early menopause are signs of menopause, but it coming early. My mum actually wrote about menopause in this book. So let's see what she has to say about menopause. <laughs> so according to the Hormone Diaries, uh, menopause occurs between 45 and 55 years old, and in the UK, the average is 51. So if it's kind of happening before that, then, probably early menopause. So these are the symptoms that my mum talks about having. Hot flushes, night sweats, difficulty sleeping, problems with memory and concentration. Oh yeah, mum definitely has that. Vaginal itchiness and dryness, reduced libido, joint stiffness, aches and pains, low mood and anxiety, weak bones. Obviously she goes into more detail about how all of those things affect her, but go mum. What age range is it targeted at? Good question. It is officially for 15 plus, oh, at the back of my pants, 15 plus. This is because it is more primarily aimed at people who have been having their periods are a bit older. It's not really aimed at like young kids or tweens who are like just 
getting their period. It's more about like the lived experience of having a period. It goes into a lot more serious topics beyond like puberty. So generally it is for a more older audience who have been having periods for a while rather than, hey, this is what's about to happen to your body. It's more like, okay, this has been happening to our bodies. Let's explore this. <laughs> Speaking of it being for a slightly older audience, the next question is, will there be anything about the horrors and wonders of pregnancy? And yes, there is a whole chapter on pregnancy, which obviously I knew nothing about before writing this book. Oh boy, not really looking forward to it. But I also kind of am. I don't know. Pregnancy! Is it trans and non-binary friendly, aka this is only for girls? It is. I have tried to make it as trans and non-binary inclusive as possible. There is a entire section also dedicated to the trans experience, so there's a lot of stuff in there about HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Anytime I reference people who have periods, I say people who have periods, menstruators, bleeders, etc. Hormones and being trans. There's a lot of uh, letters, diary entries in here from trans and non-binary folk as well. So, hope you enjoy. I really tried my damn best to make it as inclusive as possible, so I really hope that that is the case and I do you proud. How many pages is your book? Good question. I don't actually know. Dun, dun, dun. Oh look, they put Alex in the back. Alex's book, Transmission, 238 pages. Oh, 1111, make a wish. What kind of stories can I expect from the book? Yes, so I asked for people to write in their own like diary entries and letters, like dear my pill, dear my period, etc. There is one that really stands out to me. I'm not gonna read you the entire thing. Dear UTI, okay, lesson learned. Sex in a lake is a bad idea. Sex in a lake during Bible camp is a really bad idea. <laughs> ah! I got too funny. Did you learn anything whilst writing this book? Why, yes, I did. I learned a lot about contraception for people with penises and a lot of the research that has been done around that. I learned a lot about the history of hormonal contraception, the history of the pill. I learned a lot about endometriosis, about HRT, about pregnancy. I learned a lot. This is a very important question. Will you be doing a book tour around the UK? If so, when? Da, 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 da. Okay, future Hannah here. Yes, there is a tour. I've got dates for you and I've got a link for you to get tickets in the description. Tickets are on sale now. It is going to be a Q&A plus a book signing at Waterstones across the country. The dates are Manchester, 2nd of July, London, 3rd of July, Newcastle, 4th of July, Birmingham, 5th of July, Nottingham, 8th of July. You can get a ticket that includes the event and the book, but if you already have the book, you can just buy a ticket to the event. But if you do want your book signed, make sure you bring it along. That is one of a couple other things that have developed since filming that video. The second is that I've recorded the audiobook of The Hormone Diaries, which is also available for pre-order and will be out on the 13th of June, same day that the physical book comes out. If you're more of an audio book kind of person, it is me reading it, plus a couple other voices for the letters parts. And finally, if you would like an unseen and bonus chapter of The Hormone Diaries, this is not in the book. You cannot get this anywhere else. You have to sign up to my newsletter. There'll also be a link in the description to where you can sign up to that as well as the bonus chapter. It will be a monthly newsletter with updates from me, stories, and also announcements. You guys will be like my insider group, like first to know about things and all of that jazz. Okay, thank you. Back to the very out of focus video. I am so sorry. Don't know what my camera was doing. Don't know what my camera was doing. Just listen to it like a podcast. You don't need to see this. If you can't make any of those dates, I'm also going to be at Summer in the City in London in August. So if you bring a copy of my book there, I will sign it for you. Is there a certain sex position that causes pregnancy or is this a myth? It is a myth. When will this book be available outside the UK? I don't actually know. So the way it works is that I got a UK publishing deal um, and 
if other countries want it, then they can buy the international rights for it and then that book will come out in that country whenever. Doing It came out in the UK in 2017 and then in like 2018, um, it came out in the US, it came out in Germany and it came out in the Netherlands. So I don't know is the answer about the Hormone Diaries. If you are not in the UK and you would like to get your hands on this though, the book depository ship worldwide for free. So I will leave the link to this in the description on the book depository, which if you are non-UK is your best bet if you want the English UK version. If you want it in your own language, then start pestering publishers to be like, you should get this book. Did getting your period while writing the book make you want to take a break or spur you on? I love this question, but actually I didn't get my period at all whilst writing the book because the Marina Coil, which is the contraception that I'm currently on, has just completely stopped my periods and I am forever grateful. But yeah, so there were no period breaks whilst writing a book about periods. Do you share some positive views and happiness about periods in the book? Always struggle to find the better perspective on periods as it's always just a hassle for my body, my wallet, and apparently the environment. Oh, I feel you. But yes, I think the book is very balanced in terms of experiences and views around periods and contraception. You know, everyone has got a different experience and we all feel very differently about our periods. Some people are like, yes, I love my period. This is amazing. Other people are just like, get this thing away from me. I think all of that is valid and all of that is very much shown in the book. What do you wish you knew about periods before getting yours? So I knew about periods before I got my first period. So it wasn't a shock to me when I first like saw the blood in my underwear, I was like, oh, I've started my period. And after speaking to a lot of people and just like hearing other people's stories, I'm like, oh, not everyone got that luxury, which is actually kind of horrifying to me. Like what? Especially now when people are starting their period like younger and younger so that you could be like eight or nine and start your period. But unless you've had that education about it beforehand, like you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Except you might not be saying fuck cause you're eight years old or you might be, I don't know you. But yeah, I find it really sad and just really kind of horrifying that you might get your period and have no idea what it is. Like no one has warned you about what bleeding <laughs> from your vagina is like, what? Imagine not knowing what that is. I can't imagine that because I knew, but what? You think you're dying? What? On that cheerful note, thank you so much for watching. Do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear in the comments how you feel about your period. Like, are you super friendly with your period? Do you really like it? Or are you like a get away from me now? This is the worst thing ever. I hate you. Like where, where do you fall on this spectrum? If you don't have periods for whatever reason, let me know how you would feel about bleeding from your genitals. When you say bleeding from your genitals, that sounds worse than it actually is. Make sure you subscribe because I make new videos every week and so you don't miss the Hormone Diaries round table video coming out in a couple days. And buy my book. I love it. Like I'm really proud of this and I think the discussions and info in here is just really important. And I, I just really hope that you like it. I really do. Thanks again for watching. Bye.